Okay, I have something fun to share with you today. Um, but before we get started, we need uh, 26 uh, random cards uh, for you, actually. Uh, for you as the spectator, <laughs> that is. Okay, so let's just shuffle the cards up. Uh, maybe three times, I think, should be fine. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then we'll do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, 26 random cards for you here. Okay, and we'll put the remaining cards next to this other little blue deck, I guess, over here. Okay, so what I need you to do is I need you to choose a color for each of us. So would you like to have red and I take black? Or do you want black and I take red? Which color would you like? You want red? Okay, very good. Uh, we also need a shared random number between let's say five and 25. Now come to think of it, a fun way to get a number, I guess, in that range would be for you to go ahead and just count. Uh, didn't you want reds for you, I think? Uh, go ahead and just count how many red cards are in your packet of 26. Okay, now you're not here, so I'll have to help you out here. <laughs> okay, so uh, we get one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, well, that sounds like a fairly random number to me, actually. So 17 is our shared random number. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take your cards and set them on top of this blue deck that's been in camera view the whole time <laughs> and put the remaining cards on top and we're going to see if we can work some magic here. I don't know if you've ever seen teleportation of information before but uh, we're going to see if we can transmit information from the deck that we started to work with here to this blue deck that's been sitting off to the side okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to to set my hand down pressing really hard and then i'm going to see if i can somehow transfer that information from the top deck to the bottom and i can normally tell just by the sound it makes uh no that didn't do it nope Oh boy, I think that did it. That felt like we did something. <laughs> okay, well, let's just take a look at what we maybe did. Um, let's go ahead and just separate the cards. Yep, there's the one deck. Here's the blue. Very good. Okay, I'll put the blue right here. Okay, and now what we're going to do is, uh, what was the color that you designated for me? I, I think it was black, right? You took a red, I, I got black. And our shared uh, random number was 17, I believe, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count down to the 17th uh, black card and see where that takes us, okay? So 17 black cards down, okay. So help me count here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeenth black card is what we're looking. Oh, there it is. It's the Queen of Clubs, which is fine. That's great. Okay, so here is our special card decided by you together with the universe and helping us randomize the cards okay so the dealing out of a shuffled deck of cards into a random pile of 26 cards in which you were allowed to freely choose red or black for you you chose red we then had you obtain a random number by just counting how many red cards were in your packet and it was 17 and now I've just counted down 17 black cards and we've arrived at the queen of clubs. Okay, given all of that, was that information successfully transmitted or transferred to the blue deck? How would we know that? Okay, so let's just 
take a look here. I'm going to move these over like that. Okay, so how would we know if that information was successfully transferred? I don't know if it'll be clear or not, but uh, let's see. Is there anything interesting here that you... S Ooh, wait, wait a second. Uh, okay, what is going on here? Who, who wrote on my cards? These cards are expensive. Okay, so do we have markings on any others? I don't see any, do you? What could this card possibly be? Well, we were hoping to transfer magic, essentially, from the top deck to the bottom. Uh, did we succeed? We did, indeed. Oh, boy. I never know exactly how the transmission of information from one deck will manifest itself, but I think the manifestation here is as clear as day. Okay, whoa. How did we, working together, along with the powers of the universe, pull that off? Okay, so let's quickly talk about this effect. So you can do this uh, easily. This is not a difficult effect whatsoever. There's no sleight of hand, just so you know. So that's kind of nice. There is destruction of a card or two in one of your decks, I guess. Okay, so how, so how this works, so I'll just tell you what I did and you can do it differently. There's actually many, many ways of pulling this off. There's many ways of of doing the logistics of all of this, as well as the framing of the narrative. So you can come up with your own narrative if you like. Okay, so what is the setup? Well, start with, let me put this back in here. Okay, so the setup is uh, you decide on uh, two cards, one red, one black, and you have those at the bottom, okay? So there's two special cards. I had an eight of hearts that I was going to reveal depending on uh, choices made along the way or the queen of clubs depending on how things played out right with the choices the spectator can freely make okay so those begin at the bottom as mentioned now of course um, it's not too difficult to riffle shuffle a deck of cards <laughs> unless you drop the cards um, and retain the bottom two cards that's not too hard if you're trying to retain like five to ten cards good luck with that but if you're trying to retain one or two it's actually not too hard to do okay so you just make sure that the left hand side kind of falls a fraction of a second before the right hand side okay so this is the state of the deck before we begin the dealing out 26 cards into a random pile for the spectator okay so at this point uh, you just deal out cards, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, from different places in the deck. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, now these are important. These are important cards, right? That's where your special cards are. <laughs> so set those down. These go on top. Don't make a big deal. You're really kind of focusing the spectator's attention on this pile. This is the randomly dealt out pile that we're going to supposedly now work with, uh, which is true, but this one's uh, very important as well. They're both important. Okay, and then I, I guess I should back up for a second here. So our special cards, so as far as the preparation. So uh, you choose them. So I chose the Queen of Clubs, Eight of Hearts, okay? Now, what that means uh, ahead of time, what you need to do is have a deck of cards on which you write an X on the back for one of those special cards. I decided to go with the Queen of Clubs, okay? And it was just a way for me to remember the black card is associated with the back being marked, okay? So black on the back, okay? Okay, and then what you need to do is you need to put a big X on the front of the other one, which was the eight of hearts, right? Okay, so unknown to the spectator, there's an X on the back of one and an X on the front of the other. Now, of course, if you, when you go to spread these out, you need to know, should you spread them face down like I did, 
or face up, depending on which card you're going to reveal. And that's all decided by the spectator, actually, in terms of the choices that they make, okay? So the way I remember this was black and back, start with B, and then I thought of a red face, somebody having a red face, angry face or something. So on the face of a red card, namely the eight of hearts, you don't have to remember that necessarily once you set it up. Um, I've written an X, okay? So that's how I remembered if I'm revealing a black card, I need to show the backs. If I'm revealing a red card, I show the faces, okay? Um, okay, so this is all uh, set up ahead of time. Okay, and so let's go back. So I've dealt out the 26 cards, very good, where our special cards are at the bottom, which is where we need them. Okay, now the spectator is actually free to choose either color for themselves, red or black. And we could even do the opposite this time if you want. Um, so maybe they'll say they want black, black for their special color and red for me. And then tell them we need a shared number. And a good way to get a shared number between say five and 25 is just to count how many, let's say black cards there are in their packet, okay? And so they would go through and count how many black, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 black cards. Okay, now there is an important principle here that we're using that I talk about elsewhere on my channel. When you divide a deck into two halves, there is one property you can count on. The number of red cards here in one half will equal the number of black cards in the other half and vice versa. The number of black cards here will equal the number of red cards here, okay? So it's called the offset equal parts principle. Okay, so that's something you can plan on. That's mathematically the case. Okay, so what that means then is the number of black cards here, which is what we're going to have them count out, is the number of red cards here. Well, think about it. If so it was 11, right? 11 black cards, I believe. So what that means then is if you go down 11 red cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so it's going to take you to the bottom most red card. And we positioned it there. We know what it is, it's the eight of hearts and it's gonna to correspond to a special card over here, okay? Um, okay, so just be aware that's kind of the driving principle behind this all actually, as far as the mathematics. The fact that these two halves have equal opposite parts. Okay, so you've, you have them count how many black cards there are and there was 11. Right, and then what we do is we just bring over this other deck that's been in camera view, it's been in view the whole time, and explain that we're going to try to do some magic with the current deck and this blue deck. So you set the spectators half on top, you set the other half that has the special cards on the bottom, right, on the very top, okay? Because one thing we know for sure is the 11th red card down from the top of this upper deck is guaranteed to be the eight of hearts, right? Okay. Um, and then however you want, I don't know if I, you know, you can probably come up with a better way to sell the idea that you're transferring some kind of magical information from, from the top deck to the bottom, you know, and, you know, give it a big smack or something. And yeah, you know, maybe a few false starts where you think, oh, yeah, I don't think that worked, and then hit it a little harder or something. And then, you know, once you're convinced that, okay, I think we've pulled off the magical element of this whole thing, go ahead and just separate the decks. Okay, it looks like it wasn't too hard to do. So put those there, set aside these for just a moment that we'll need them, okay? And now you just, review with the spectator, uh, see what color did you designate to me as the performer? Oh yeah, yeah, it was red. You, you said that you wanted black, which you did. And we, in fact, we even had you count how many black cards there were in your half. And so our shared number is 11. And so my color is red. So I'm gonna go ahead and just count down to the 11th red card, right? One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Now, this doesn't mean anything to anyone right now. I mean, they don't know anything about the eight of heart being that kind of a special card. So you bring it here and say, well, okay, that's interesting. And then you can do what I did, where you review the fact that you started with a shuffle deck, which is kind of true, right? And then you dealt out cards randomly from different parts of the deck to create a packet of 26 cards for the spectator to use, which is true. And then you had them freely choose red or black, which they did. You had them count how many cards of that color in their half, which they did. And so that gave us a shared number here. It was 11. And then, you know, at this point, we are counting to the 11th red card because red was the color you gave me. And then, um, and at this point, you need to remember, okay, let's see. Do I want to reveal these cards face down like this? Or do I want to flip them face up? Well, if you remember, the way that I remembered it is if it's a black card that we're going to be matching up, you want to show the backs. Okay? Back and black start with B. Or if it's a red card, you want to show the faces. Red faces, right? So show the face of the cards. Okay? Which is what we would do here, right? So the eight of hearts. And then you just spread these and say, hmm, I wonder how the cards are going to communicate to us whether or not we were successful in transferring information from our deck to this blue back deck. How would we... Oh, wait a second. Look at this. I think... What, what the heck? Who's been writing on my cards? You know? And you can go through here and show there's no other cards with the marking. And you've nailed it. <laughs> somehow despite all of those random seemingly random processes in the mind of the spectator and random choices which is actually true I mean the the choices are random whether they have red or black as their special color and even the number of cards of that color in their half is random we we won't know that ahead of time but it doesn't matter because the number of let's say black cards in their half will match the number of red cards in ours okay so that's the mathematical magical step that's what, really what makes the whole thing work okay and then the rest is just presentation okay now of course uh, you don't really want the spectator now poking around here right so you, you the deck won't be examinable in that sense uh, but that often happens with effects okay so um, I hope you enjoyed that uh, this is uh, you know very simple mathematical card effect because of the equal opposite parts principle that's mathematical in nature uh, but it's one that really anyone could learn in you know, five ten minutes and it's very very surprising for 99 percent of spectators out there so thank you for watching and i'll include a link in the description below to this opposite equal parts principle that i talked about because there's so much you can do with that very simple principle so I'll include a link to a videos and maybe even a playlist that uses that principle in fun and creative ways. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.